Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope the short break was refreshing. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank you again. We hope over the course of the next four days you build new connections, you're inspired to innovate Drupal, and that you join us in creating a better web. Oh, did you want something else? Is there more content? OK, well, if you wanted more, without further ado, please welcome Jennifer Griffin-Smith of Acquia to introduce what you have all been waiting for, the Dries Note. everyone. Nice to be here. Wasn't that an amazing opening session? I feel like I'm, in, I'm educated about baguettes and I'm in so inspired by the amazing women in Drupal. Congratulations on the award winners. That was so cool to see. So it's great to be here as the single largest contributor um, of Drupal. Acquia is immensely proud to be a diamond sponsor of DrupalCon Lille. Thank you to the Drupal Association for putting on such an amazing community event. We really love to be here. We would love to see you all. We'd love to get to meet you all. Please come to our booth in the exhibition area. If you haven't already tried your hand at our grab machine, there are some amazing giveaways. And we have our Acquia branded Converse. We'll be giving some of those away too. So please stop by, we'd love to see you all. At Acquia, our mission is to help you and everybody possible to be able to build the most productive, the most inclusive, and the most safe digital experiences for all our users. And that is why I'm so proud this morning to get to introduce the next keynote. Um, so without further ado, let me welcome to the stage your founder, our Chief Technology Officer and Chief Strategy Officer, Dries. Bonjour, comment ça va? Um, some of you might not know, but being born in Belgium, I do speak a little bit of French, not a lot. Um, but unfortunately, I moved to the US about 12 years ago, and my French got quite rusty. And I felt it this morning when some people came up to me and started rattling to me in French. Um, you're definitely welcome to do that. I think I will understand 95% of what you say, but I might not be able to respond in French back to you. But you're always welcome to come talk to me in French. It will be good exercise. Um, the opening remarks were remarkable. I loved all of the celebrations. I was touching. It was inspiring, uh, all of these things. And talking about celebrations, the last time I was in Lille was actually a few years ago. And I was here to celebrate my birthday, my 40th birthday, believe it or not. Uh, with some dear friends. And while I was in Lille, and we strolled through the streets of Lille, I saw an old bookstore. And inside the bookstore, I stumbled upon this mysterious book that you see on the screen. And it was a book with something oddly familiar about its cover. Right? It looked to be about Drupal. And so I picked up a copy of the book. And what I would like to do today is actually read you a few chapters of the book, 
What do you think? Yeah? All right, so it's going to be a special Dries node, a little bit different than anything I've ever done. Uh, but I'm going to be essentially your narrator reading a book to you. We'll see how that goes. Uh, all right, let's go. It all started like most great books start. So once upon a time, there was a CMS called Drupal. And it might not look it, but Drupal had magical powers. Drupal was a shape shifter that could take any form, and it was incredibly flexible and powerful, and it could adapt to every people's needs and desires. And there was also the Drupal village. It was a quaint village full of ambitious homes and big dreams. And the villagers, equally ambitious, had built these homes in the Drupal village. And there were homes of all sizes, both big and quite small, from tiny apartments to chateau that enthrall. From every turret to tower, each home had its own special superpower. And from a cozy, simple cottage to an ornate estate, each home was crafted with care, every detail deliberate and great. And regardless of size or shape, each brick, each beam, and joint was placed with a commitment to lasting stability and great attention to detail. Their sturdy walls exuded robustness and safety. And in these cleverly engineered homes, walls moved and roof lines expanded effortlessly. No renovation was impossible or too hard. And this allowed homes to be adapted and expanded to each new chapter of the villagers' lives. And the Drupal village thrived thanks to its diverse villagers, each contributing their own unique points of view. And each home melded form and function to meet the various needs of the villagers. But there was an even bigger positive to the village of Drupal. There were frequent town hall meetings, and everybody had a say. And these meetings ensured that each villager had a voice. From the seasoned elder to the young novice, everyone was invited. It was a community where teamwork reigned supreme. And residents enjoyed owning their homes and were free to come and go as they pleased. They had boundless freedom, with the liberty to roam and return at will. You see, everything in the Drupal villages could be summed up in eight words. Creativity, flexibility, scalability, accessibility, collaboration, empowerment, security, and freedom. But not everything was perfect in Drupal Village. While the homes of Drupal Village were stunning, building them wasn't always easy. Villagers, surrounded by a sea of tools and materials, often found themselves confused. Building a home could sometimes spiral into a labyrinth of choices and challenges. And it wasn't just that. The tools, while capable, had complex features. Their intricate functions perplexed many villagers. And the complexity got in the way of villagers building their dreams. Luckily, everybody took great care of their homes. But upkeeping their homes was hard and tiring work. Demands of upkeep often soared high. And as Drupal walked among the villagers, grumblings of dissatisfactions were growing. Things aren't moving fast enough. Things are too complex. The villagers, loving yet longing, hoped for a change, an easier way to build and take care of their homes. And Drupal always wanted to make life easier of the villagers and felt sad knowing that not all villagers were happy because Drupal had tried and tried, but it still was not enough. And then one morning, while touring the Drupal village, Drupal came across a group of builders working on a home, many of them young builders, full of promise and ideas. These were the future of the village, these young builders. And one of the young builders looked restless, 
His gaze was beginning to drift towards the bright lights of nearby villages. He was curious about the promise of other ways of building, perhaps easier ways to build. And then Drupal watched, heart aching, as a promising young builder abruptly rose and left the village he had lovingly helped build. He was headed towards a nearby neighboring village. And Drupal couldn't help but wonder if the other villages were truly as promising as they appeared to be. And driven by this curiosity, Drupal chose to head out on a quest, determined to uncover the mysteries of these other villages. And that brings us to the start of quest one. Shall we continue? Yeah? All right. All right, so Drupal is going to visit some other villages. Um, so let's, let's do that. So, upon entering the town immediately next door, Drupal marveled at the intricacies of its houses. The village bust with a trendy and hip vibe. Each street told tales of energetic crafting and innovative minds. And Drupal noticed that the town folk were all wearing eye-catching hats, dazzling with colors and patterns, their gestures and conversations echoing the latest trends. And the town folk appeared to constantly react to whatever was in fashion. <laughs> Drupal felt a little bit out of place. And Drupal asked one of the villagers, which town is this? It was the town of Reactopia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and look, there is the mayor of Reactopia. <laughs> it looks a little bit handmade. He seemed to have cast a spell over the res residents of Reactopia, and they were known as reactionaries. And due to the spell, they blindly embraced whatever was in vogue. Anyway, Drupal was initially impressed with their homes and their buildings, until going inside one of those buildings. On the inside, their homes were surprisingly sparse and very complex. The apartments were missing Modern conveniences like an elevator or a dishwasher, everything had to be done by hand. The houses seemed to require a lot of hard manual labor, which was a surprise given their glamorous appearances on the outside. And in fact, Drupal noticed that residents had to hire help to keep up with all the chores. And Drupal, while absorbing the lively spirits of Reactopia, couldn't help but notice a certain familiarity in their challenges. Many of the problems they were solving had already been solved in Drupal's village. They had even been automated, ensuring convenient everyday living. And unlike in Reactopia, where this wasn't the case, um, so Drupal left Reactopia and he headed out to the next village, hoping to learn some new things. Approaching the next place, Drupal saw structures of canvas, not brick. The village was made of tents, not houses. And getting even closer, the homes had an alluring simplicity and seemed really easy to move into. In fact, each new resident was gifted a starter kit for their tent, and with it, user-friendly tools simplifying their settlements. And somehow, it came with a plate of Swedish meatballs, too. <laughs> More curious than ever, Drupal approached a local villager and asked, what do you call this place? It was the encampment of Contentville. But beneath the charming veneer, a stark reality ling lingered. Every plot, every tent, was owned by a single landlord. Villagers lived at the mercy of Lord Contentless, which you can see on the screen. And while passing through, Drupal happened upon an old friend gazing out of one of the tents. And Drupal asked her why she, why she chose to live there. And she responded, the quick setup and initial freedom was enticing, she answered. But the friend also confessed, when Lord Contentless raised the rent, and I wanted to move out, I was trapped in my own home. I couldn't move. 
Truly, she looked rather discontented. Continuing along the journey to the next city, Drupal's heart felt heavy, and Drupal wondered how to best assist his friends. How could Drupal Village be made more easy to move into and build in, yet without holding villagers hostage? In the next village, Drupal noticed that the homes had square-like appearance. They were like little blocks, almost identical. Yet moving in seemed easy as pie. The houses even came fully furnished. It was a suburb of Squarex. Look, there are the two owners. And upon closer look, Drupal realized that all the houses followed the same pattern. Two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and they all looked like they had popped out of some, uh, the same design store. They even had the same floor plans. On the bright side, there was a silver lining. Home maintenance happened like clockwork. This was thanks to the whimsical, magical maintenance fairies, who whisked, whisked in and fixed homes automatically. Squarex was quite the enchanting place indeed. Leaving Squarex, Drupal was en enchanted by the thought of maintenance fairies. Their magical touch left a lasting impression. How nice would it be to have some of those taking care of updates in Drupal's own village? Drupal then approached a place with some very large, very grand homes. Clearly, some very famous lords and ladies lived here. Eventually, Drupal found someone who was willing to chat. And Drupal asked, what is this place called? It was the gated community of Adobe Heights. <laughs> Everything looked gilded in gold. And Drupal saw the Duke of Adobe Heights pass by, a glimmer of greed in his eyes. And a resident came upon, could not stop talking about how great life was in Adobe Heights. He talked and talked, and he painted this picture of how scalable and how breathtaking the interior design was and how, this, uh, how the conveniences were state of the art. And privately, Drupal wondered how necessary six golf courses really are. But as the man spoke of these luxuries, Drupal could spot a hint of sadness in his eyes. And Drupal asked, why are you looking sad? The villager sighed and confined. Every change or extension costs a small fortune and takes forever to build. My home is not even complete. I put my life savings into living here, but now I find myself with nothing left. And upon leaving the last village, Drupal was conflicted. Each of the villages had major flaws, yet Drupal could see why the young builder was drawn to them. All right, and so I'm going to step out of the story for a second, but um, by exploring the different villages, we actually learned quite a bit, right? We learned that React is uh, very manual and not marketer friendly, but that developers adore it, um, and that it's definitely in fashion, I would say. Um, we also learned that Contentful suffers from proprietary vendor lock-in. It's something that I think a lot of people seem to forget. Um, but on the bright side, it's easy to get started with Contentful. I think that's what draws a lot of people to it. Uh, we learned that Squarespace and Wix come with limitations, um, yet they're incredibly user-friendly uh, for building, and, and regardless of technical skill, really, and you know, don't forget those magical maintenance fairies or automatic updates. Um, you don't have to really go and update software. And then lastly, uh, with Adobe, sorry, I'm one click behind. With Adobe, while they can be very expensive, they certainly pack a powerful punch in terms of uh, capabilities as well, right? So in a moment of profound revelation, Drupal grasped the key to prosperity. To make Drupal Village thrive, the builder experience must be nothing short of exceptional. Easier to start, easier to build, and easier to maintain. And with this vision in mind, and recognizing the gravity of the moment, Drupal summoned the finest craftspeople around 
to gather in a nearby atelier or workshop. I think it was called uh, a WeWork. <laughs> and so the first order of business was to make it easier to get started. And this obviously is where Project Browser comes in, one of our strategic initiatives. Uh, I spoke about Project Browser in previous Dries notes. I'm not going to cover it in great detail here. Um, but I recommend you go check out the recording of the previous Dries note, for example, where it had videos and all kinds of things. There's also a long blog post that we uh, wrote uh, on the topic, so I recommend you can check that out as well. I would say the Project Browser initiative is well underway. Um, the code freeze for Drupal 10.2, which is our next sort of release, uh, is in November, and we're not quite sure if we can make it for that. So most likely, Project Browser will become stable and part of Drupal core in Drupal 10.3, which would be next summer. Um, all right. Continuing with unwavering determination, Drupal and the craftspeople embarked on the second part of the promise, making our tools easier to use. And the goal was clear, to empower villagers with intuitive instruments. And for that, I have a few videos. Um, I'm going to introduce the first craftsperson, uh, and he's going to give an update as a video recording, and that is Tim Plunkett. And Tim will talk about the improvements that we're making to Drupal's content modeling capabilities, also known as the field UI in Drupal Speak. So let's watch the video together. Hi, I'm Tim Plunkett, an engineering manager, Acquia's Drupal Acceleration team, here to talk to you about usability improvements made to Drupal's Field UI. The Field UI is how Drupal site builders implement their site's content model. In January, our team sought to better understand the user flow when users implement a content model and what specific pain points contribute to the perception that Drupal is hard to use. We began with user research completing the first round in February, and after analyzing and summarizing the feedback, we began work on two specific areas. The first area is the flow when adding a new field. In current Drupal sites, adding a new field starts with navigating to a new page and selecting a new field type from a select list. Your new field is immediately created and available to content authors, but it is created before you are able to configure it, so you have to proceed through two additional steps to do so. In the new flow, Instead of a new page, a modal is open, with a grid of available field types to choose from. Those field types are grouped and better explained thanks to new icons and descriptions. An additional improvement I'd like to call attention to is an increase in the speed of machine name generation that not only improves the field UI, but all places where machine names are used in Drupal. From there, you stay in the modal and only have one additional step of configuration. After this single configuration step, your new field is created. The second area is around reusing an existing field on another content type. Previously, the list of available fields was presented as a select list within the add field UI. Now reusing a field is in its own modal, and instead of a simple list with no explanation of what the fields are or where else they are used, a table with all this relevant context is presented. These changes were first built as prototypes, with some aspects hard-coded and definitely not up to core coding standards. The prototypes were then validated by new rounds of user testing, tweaked, and retested. Once we were confident in the approach, Drupal core issues were created, and work began on cleaning up the prototype code and making them proper merge requests. The change to reusing fields was the first major improvement to land in Drupal core, which happened in April. Incremental improvements continued to be committed every few weeks, with only one remaining piece yet to be finalized. All told, we went from ideation through delivery in just over eight months with confidence at each step that we were making improvements that would benefit users. There have been over 45 commits to Drupal core improving the field UI as a direct result of this work. Much of it is already available in Drupal 10.1, and we look forward to sharing the final result in Drupal 10.2. Thanks to all who contributed to this effort. There you go, yeah. These are some really great improvements. And then also, as Tim alluded to, the speed at which we've been, been able to make those improvements have been really uh, great as well, you know, much better than maybe in the past. Um, next, I have another video. Um, in this video, we're going to give you, you a, an overview of the admin UI and the work we're doing by Christine. The administration toolbar to make it easier to use. 
As a result, we decided to work on a new toolbar that will eventually replace the existing toolbar in Drupal Core with the goal of enhancing the user experience of the admin interface in Drupal. This will make Drupal easier and more enjoyable to use for villagers. We're planning to move most of the main admin navigation functionality into a left vertical sidebar and a possible top bar with contextual tools based on where you are. We based our initial designs and prototypes on research of competitors, industry standards and previous UX studies on the topic. But we also were able to gather insights from contributed modules and admin themes to inform our direction. We built a prototype with hardcore links and we we'll use uh, that for usability tests to gather feedback from content users and site uh, builders. We've done multiple rounds of usability tests and we've iterated the prototypes based on the results, which has led us uh, to several changes and improvements from the initial assumptions. Based on testing, we are confident that the new toolbar designs offer a better experience than the old core toolbar. In terms of where we are right now, we are working on several aspects. We are in the process of converting the initial hard code links into real menus so we can have an alpha release for people to test. And in addition, we are working on improving the administration menus by rethinking the words that we use on the groupings. For example, we are testing a proposal to create a new content creation menu with direct links to create content. But we also want to improve the existing administration menu to make it easier for any user to understand where they are, regardless of their experience with Drupal. We also found that the initial left navigation wasn't addressing all the need that we had for integrations. So we're working uh, with a suggestion coming from Jin, which is a top toolbar that will show contextual content. We're also in the process of testing the initial mobile designs, as well as validating that the new toolbar is accessible now that the markup is almost done. So far, a lot of people has helped move this forward, but I would love to highlight how companies have aligned the efforts to bring innovation to Drupal. We invite everyone to help at the contribution from this way, both with code and testing. Your input and feedback are valuable to us as we continue to improve this part of Drupal. This won't be in Drupal 10.2 as the code freezes in a month time, so we're currently targeting Drupal 10.3. But you can test it on the country namespace navigation where the development is taking part and Jin has just launched an experimental feature so you can also test it. Yeah. Very exciting. All right. Recognizing the importance of gathering insight directly from the ambitious villagers, uh, Drupal entrusted Lori, one of the council members in Drupal Village, to conduct a census survey uh, of, the village, of villagers near and far. And Lori engaged with the Drupal villagers in order to delve into their experiences, their desires and suggestions to further improve the builder experience. And so this effort aims to make sure that many voices were heard and every need was considered. Um, so let's take a look at what the consensus revealed. Hey, I'm Laura Escola, one of the Drupal Core product managers. I'm here to talk about improvements to Drupal's page building experience. Earlier this year, we started hearing some rumors Many of the villagers were talking about challenges they were having with Drupal's page building experience. Because of this, we decided to do some research to figure out if there was something that we could do to improve this. For the past couple of months, we've been talking to Drupal users and agencies to learn how they are using the tools that are currently available in the market. Quick into the process, we learned that we were not talking about one solution, but multiple, and the trade-offs between the different solutions were hard. Because of this, the goal of the research became to understand what are the common requirements for different solutions and what are the different challenges people are having. We talked to more than 30 people as part of this process. We tried to get people from various different kinds of backgrounds, and we ended up getting people from 16 different organizations, from large enterprises to freelancers. We're grateful to everyone who contributed their time and shared their insights as part of this. We learned about many of the complexities that builders faced with the different solutions. 
We learned there are hard trade-offs between things like a good editor experience or choosing a solution that scaled better for their site, or how much time it took to set up. We also learned that many of the organizations had made significant investments to improve the user experience for their users. We also spent time testing competing solutions to better understand what our competition is like. We learned how easy to use and easy to set up many of the solutions in the market are. Based on these findings, we have worked on a vision for a next generation page building tool for Drupal. We want to build a tool that is as flexible and powerful as the tools we have now, but would not require site builders to weigh between multiple options. A single solution that is easy for site builders to set up. A solution that editors find intuitive to use, enabling them to get started without significant onboarding. Let's take a look at some of the mockups that we have created for visualizing how this new experience could look like. We need to start by designing a UI that editors love to use. We want to make sure that the editors can intuitively do all of the common tasks, such as adding new blocks. If you've heard building pages is often an iterative process, you might not know exactly what you are building up front. So for this reason, we want to make sure that editors have enough flexibility to change content even after it has been created like changing the ordering of the sections or changing the number of columns in a section. To extend our competitive advantage around structured data, the page building experience should not feel like it's a layer on top of the existing tooling. Instead, it should be integrated as part of the experience, allowing editors to edit both the page layout and the structured fields through a single UI. We want to combine together the most powerful features from different solutions. One of these is a library of pre-configured sections, this enables editors to add sections that have already blocks placed inside the sections. We're still in a very early stage and there's a lot of work that needs to be done. One of the next steps is to decide which of the solutions that we want to use as the starting point. Based on the amount of interest we've seen towards this, I believe this is something we can achieve if we as a community work on this together. We have a both later today, so join us there or come say hi at the Layouts channel on Drupal Slack. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Tim and Laurie and Christine, for all their leadership and great work. Uh, it's exciting to see uh, a lot of these things come to life, and it's also exciting to see how the process that we use has matured. You know, lots of user testing, uh, ability to move faster, all of these things are, are pretty encouraging, I think. So, great work all around. All right. So, Overflowing with enthusiasm for Lori's plan, Drupal gathered the entire village. In front of all the villagers, Drupal made a big announcement, the launch of Next Generation Page Builder as a strategic initiative. This initiative would shape the future of their builder experience. Lastly, enamored by the whimsical, magical maintenance fairies encountered on the journey, Drupal wanted to bring that touch of magic into Drupal Village. Drupal firmly believed that having maintenance fairies of its own would alleviate many of the burdens of manual upkeep and maintenance. This would allow the village to thrive with greater ease and efficiency. Now, we have already made a lot of improvements to making Drupal easier to upgrade, starting with our new release model and new innovation model all the way back in Drupal 8. So maybe it's not that new anymore. Um, but that new model of innovation and doing releases really helped uh, make it a lot easier to upgrade core, but also helped to make it a lot easier uh, to upgrade uh, contributed modules. In addition to that, we've seen innovations like Rector, um, that Tiffany mentioned uh, just earlier, but it essentially allows you to do automatic code uh, updates or code fixes, especially around deprecated APIs. And then obviously, as many of you know, we have a strategic initiative um, you know, called Automatic Updates, which is essentially you know, adding automatic updates functionality to Drupal core. Um, that initiative is going well. Um, it's making great progress. Um, there's a few things that need to happen. But again, due to the freeze date of Drupal 10.2, most likely uh, this will go in um, in Drupal 10.3. Maybe there's a very, very small chance we can still get it in in 10.2, but just to set expectations, uh, let's assume that this will make it into uh, Drupal 10.3. Uh, and all of these things combined uh, will continue to make it easier and easier for people to upgrade and maintain their Drupal sites. 
uh, something that we've now been working on for many years, but I can tell you that every year it gets a little bit easier. Um, on that note, as probably many of you know, um, in three weeks or so, uh, Drupal 9 reaches its end of life. Um, that means Drupal 9 websites will have to upgrade to Drupal 10 in sort of the next three weeks or next month. Uh, and that obviously requires contributed modules to be Drupal 10 compatible. Um, the good news here is that uh, only 2.6%, or let's call it 3% of contributed modules, yeah. Yeah, this is huge, you know, like roughly 3% of contributed modules or projects, I should say, are not ready uh, for Drupal 10. Um, but with that, I want to say thank you, huge gratitude to those module maintainers or project maintainers that have already upgraded their modules to Drupal 10. Uh, and then if you are a maintainer of a project that does not have a Drupal 10 release, please consider upgrading it. Um, chances are there is an end user or multiple end users or sometimes many end users that eagerly want to upgrade and might not be able to because there is not a stable release or uh, a tagged stable release of your module. So if you have the time um, and if you can, please upgrade your modules to Drupal 10 as fast as possible so that people can uh, upgrade to Drupal 10. That would be really good for, for Drupal. All right, with all these plans underway, Fields UI, Admin UI, Page Builder, Project Browser, Automatic Updates, and more, Drupal was excited. Drupal unfurled a piece of parchment and wrote down the builder experience. Easier to start, easier to build, easier to maintain. And it was more than just words. It was a vow, a beacon of hope destined to lift the spirits of the Drupal villagers. But upon looking up from the parchment, Drupal saw dark clouds over Drupal village. The Drupal village had become dark. And just when Drupal seemed to be done, a new problem arose. This is the start of chapter two, if you will, or quest two. Uh, curious what happens next? Oh, yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, all right. Drupal was worried that the village was shrouded in dark clouds, casting a veil of darkness over its thriving community. It was hard to see, but Drupal could discern shadowy figures responsible for these dark clouds. They were the proponents of the closed web. Advocates for vendor lock-in, proprietary software, data misuse, a desire for centralization, and walled gardens. And Drupal felt helpless, frustrated, and confused, and couldn't believe some old friends, and some new friends too, were trapped or were getting their pockets emptied in order to build their dreams. And that night, Drupal was restless in bed. And in the quiet of the night, Drupal was visited by a fairy godfather. The fairy godfather was none other than Tim Berners-Lee, <laughs> the creator of the World Wide Web. And Tim Berners-Lee spoke with wisdom and reassurance. Do not abandon your mission, Drupal. Remember, you are the champion of the open web. And the words of the fairy godfather, Tim Berners-Lee, resonated deeply within Drupal. His words reaffirmed what Drupal had always known deep inside, that it is possible to help builders without all the drawbacks that Drupal had seen in the other villages, that it was possible to resist the dark forces of the closed web. And for the open web, Drupal realized, was indeed a noble cause worth defending and developing. And in the morning, with newfound determination, Drupal wasted no time. Drupal penned the Open Web Manifesto, a declaration of unwavering commitment to an open and accessible web for all. The Open Web Manifesto is a document that we released in the past few months uh, after DrupalCon Pittsburgh. Uh, it's an important document for Drupal, so I would encourage you all to read it. You can find it on the link here. It's on the Drupal.org website. Um, but it's an important document because it's essentially a promise, 
Uh, it's a promise that Drupal will always be built on freedom, decentralization, inclusion, participation, and emp empowerment. Um, it's, it comes from a belief that everyone should be able to have a presence on the web. And it comes from a belief that you don't need permission to learn, build, or advance the web. That everyone in the world, regardless of background, identity, ability, wealth, or status, can have a home on the open web. It's also based on a belief that the web should be truly decentralized and not controlled by a few. And a belief that we need to protect, not exploit, personal data. It's about a pro-privacy web. And so, yeah, I encourage you to go read that document, because um, I do think it's very important uh, for Drupal. And so back to the story. So Drupal now has made two promises. Drupal promised to improve the builder experience and to champion the open web. And with these two promises made, Drupal felt confident the villagers would finally be happy. Drupal would equip the villagers with better tools and easier tools. Plus, Drupal had wholeheartedly renewed its commitment to the principles of the open web. Yet, beneath the newfound confidence, a lingering feeling of unease persisted. The dark clouds of the closed web still obscured the Drupal village. And in fact, they had grown darker and denser. And the dark clouds formed an impenetrable shield. The thick clouds concealed the Drupal village and its bustling activities from curious builders around. And as a result, few people knew about the village and what was going on there, and even fewer people were moving in. Then, Drupal had a thought. During the journey to other villages, Drupal had heard tales of mystical sorcerers. Legends told of their powers, powers that helped the other villages. And Drupal believed that they could lift the dark clouds that were hiding Drupal's village. And the good news is, I have three of them here in the room. So let's invite them on stage. Yeah. They're called the Drupal Marketing Committee. Yeah. <laughs> now let me set the stage a little bit for you. Um, but as you might recall, if you paid attention to DrupalCon Pittsburgh, the Drupal Association has decided to focus on three strategic initiatives. And actually, this is something that we ratified shortly after Pittsburgh. But innovation, we're going to invest a lot more in innovation, which I showed some of you, or some of it. Second, we made a commitment to invest in marketing. And that's what we'll be talking about. And then the third piece is philanthropy, trying to raise more money to invest back in Drupal. And so the marketing committee um, is one of the committees that we created uh, in recent months. And I have some of the marketing committee here on stage. And um, yeah, let's uh, do a quick Q&A. And I'm going to start with um, asking each of you to quickly introduce yourself. So bonjour. I'm Lynn Capozzi. I'm the former CEO of Acquia, a CMO, sorry. And <laughs> well, that was a little Freudian, huh? <laughs> well, I'm the former CMO of Acquia. I'm happy to say and proud to say that I joined the board of the Drupal Association this past year. And I think I've been a Drupal villager for a little over 13 years. I'm Suzanne Dekocheva. I'm one of the co-founders of Evolving Web, a Drupal agency. And I'm also the lead of the Promote Drupal initiative. And I've moved into the Drupal village about 15 years ago. Hi, I'm Nikhil Deshpande. I'm the Chief Digital and AI Officer with the State of Georgia. Uh, been a Drupal villager for about 12 years and introduced Drupal within the state. And today we are the official CMS for the state in form of the official system that we built or any other individual site that an agency needs to host. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Lynn, I'll start with a question for you. Tell us a little bit more about the marketing committee because there's more than three people on the marketing committee. Yeah, there are lots of different marketing sorcerers. We only had three robes, <laughs> so we stuck with us today. Um, but the marketing committee actually is a great collaboration between members of the board. So myself and Nikhil and uh, Raul has contributed a great deal as well. 
many other board members are coming to marketing committee meetings. We've uh, roped in Batty a couple of times to come join us, as well as collaboration with Suzanne, and she'll talk about the Promote Drupal group, as well as many other members of the community and our great partners and agencies that are out there. So a lot of people are involved, and um, the whole point of the committee is to figure out how do we do some marketing around Drupal, the product? Because I do feel like, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, Dries, but you know, we as the Drupal Association, we haven't really done hardcore product marketing mm -hmm. from Drupal in, in, I don't know, ever? Ever, maybe? probably, yeah. Right, <laughs> so it's nice to kind of focus on it. I mean, we as companies and agencies that focus on our companies and what we provide, but this is gonna be a, a vehicle for us to create actually a marketing plan, and my goal is to make that word not be uh, to get it off the nasty list for a lot of you, that it's not really a nasty thing. It can be a great thing that we can do marketing. So messaging and positioning and some real programs that we're going to work on. So I'll, I'll just give you one example that's kind of near and dear to my heart based on my kids' age. I'd love to be able to have a new program to work with the universities around the world, and I do mean globally. So wouldn't it be nice if we have programs where we're encouraging people that are coming up through college and through the universities to have more exposure to Drupal, right? And, and, and other programs that we'll talk about, but it also means like our goal is to be able to provide things like uh, a marketing playbook. So we give to everyone, we figure out how to get it translated into all the languages that we need to, and then you have what's the messaging, what's the positioning, what should we use for the slides, and so forth. So even some basic things like that so we get some uniformity. So that the goal being obviously that we develop and try to get more people into the Drupal Village, and probably more people and make them great contributors, and look at uh, building a community of Drupal villagers as well that are on the marketing side that maybe we haven't had great exposure to in the past. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Suzanne, people know you from many things, but one of the things people know you from is Promote Drupal. It's also a marketing initiative, if you will. So maybe it's useful to talk a little bit about Promote Drupal and how it relates to the marketing committee. Yeah, so Promote Drupal is uh, part of the Drupal community. We're members of the Drupal community. And we're mostly designers, marketers, copywriters who are passionate about Drupal. Um, and as you might know, the Drupal Association is a small and mighty team. Um, and they need help from the community to produce marketing materials. So we're, we're working uh, very closely with them. And being part of the marketing committee uh, will help us really align our efforts and make sure that we're all working together. And also make sure that the community community really has a voice because we're such an essential part of the Drupal project and in creating the Drupal product. So the product marketing um, should really flow organically from the, the community's efforts. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions about why marketing, and, and Lynn already spoke to some of that, but um, you know, one could argue that Drupal has survived all these years, 20-something years, without too much marketing. So why invest in marketing now, right? Like, why has marketing uh, become important for Drupal success? So, Nikhil, you want to start? Yeah, so I've been on the, both sides of the table, and about 13 years ago when I was looking for a content management system back then to replace a closed source content management system, also bleeding a lot of my budget behind it, and not a great product. Um, I did research and looked up, up Drupal and was immediately convinced that this was indeed you know, the right choice and made the move. Uh, but I feel like today, if I were to do that, I feel like the, the landscape has expanded and it has just absolutely been cluttered by so many options and so many loud voices. Right, I get, I get weekly phone calls or emails. A lot of them start out by saying, we know your association with Drupal, but here's what we offer. So they are very aggressive. And I think it's a testament to the product that it has sustained, it has survived all these years without marketing. But I think in this day and age, I think marketing is important. It is very important to spread that word about the village. It is also very important to convey that it's easy for a single person or a small business to move and build something, and it's also equally safe and trustworthy for someone to move their large enterprise and build you know, their mansion or their mall. So I think of all the times, 
having building those advocates, building those champions is very important, and that's what we're hoping to build as a script for everyone to take away and you know be those foot soldiers for Drupal. I love that. Yeah, thanks for sharing, um, Suzanne. You own an agency. You help run an uh, help run an agency. Um, how do you think this will help agencies, not just your agency, obviously, but all of the Drupal agencies in the world? Any thoughts on that? Absolutely. So like many of you who are agency leaders, uh, we're often pitching Drupal to new clients. And some of those clients are already sold on Drupal. They, they know the benefits. Maybe they're already using it. But wouldn't it be great if we could all uh, sell Drupal more to newcomers to the, to the village, uh, to people who haven't been convinced of, of Drupal yet, and in that way really expand the market for Drupal. And I find, uh, I, I speak to a lot of agency leaders, I know we are already doing this, we're already all producing material about why you should use Drupal and we're putting that up on our websites, we're using it in sales pitches. But if we all come together and create that solid base of product marketing for Drupal as a whole, and people can find that when they're researching Drupal, when they're you know, doing their background uh, research, when they're deciding on a technology, I think it will be so much more powerful. And as agencies come together, we can really create something that's even, even better than what we can do on our own. Yeah, I've definitely had agency owners and uh, agency leaders more broadly come to me and ask me things like, well, we're up against a competitor X. How do we you know, best win against this competitor? And like, that comes down to having the right marketing materials, the right um, understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of, of the competitor, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all things that we can add. Uh, Lynn, your entire professional career has been in marketing. Uh, any other thoughts on like why marketing now? I just think the timing is really good for us. I think you know we have this awesome product with D10. There's lots of excitement about it. I think we're much more competitive than we've ever been on the product side, and I think uh, that kind of coupled with what's happening and how many people need this full like DXP capability, I think it opens up just new new doors of opportunity for us. And I will say personally, I think it's time for us to just do a, a little bit of a refresh in terms of the brand and the look and a little bit more modern. It doesn't mean throw everything away, but it just means maybe make some tweaks on things to make it just a, a touch more modern. It's a good segue actually. So let's talk a little bit about what kind of things we would do, right? Um, maybe Suzanne, you wanna start? Like what, like what can people expect when we're gonna do more marketing? So I think you can expect big changes. I, I want to be ambitious here. Um, I think you'll see changes on the visual side in terms of the Drupal brand. I think you'll also see changes in terms of the user experience when you come to drupal.org. You know, we really want to orient um, Drupal's marketing around external users, people who are discovering Drupal for the first time. And that might mean that when you come to drupal.org, you're no longer the primary um, audience uh, that we're speaking more to to these newcomers, um, and so uh, I hope you'll I hope you'll notice the changes, and I hope you'll you'll like what you see, and you'll be really as excited about it as we are. Yeah, Lynn, any other thoughts on what people can expect? Yes, yeah, so we are working on a complete marketing plan right now. We expect to have that um, in about the December time frame. And quick shout out to Tim Doyle for just having a great job of he and his staff working on driving this plan, so I'm really excited about it. So we'll see that in December. I think the other things that we'll see is, um, as Suzanne said, we already have a lot of things that are in the works. So one of the biggest things that I'm excited about right now is we have a collaborative effort together, uh, five organizations, the Drupal Association and four different partners. So it's, um, it's Acquia, it's Phase 2, it's FFW, and 1X Internet. And the group got together, and by some funding that was pooled together, we're going as a team to the Web Summit in Spain. This is about, uh, I don't know, what do we say, maybe 70,000 people? Mm -hmm. Yesterday I may have exaggerated that a little bit, yeah, but I think it's 000. actually like 70,000 or so people from around the world. It's kind of a new audience for us. And the whole booth and the whole going to that event will all be based on Drupal. So it's not just the individual agencies and, and, and partners, it is about uh, highlighting and talking about Drupal and showing the advantages of Drupal backed up with some great, obviously great, great use cases and so forth. So this is just, from, this is just I think, the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we can do for these types of shows and events to go to together. And it really shows the power of us as a community when we band together and when we can get multiple partners working together. So stay tuned. We'll see how it goes. It may not be perfect, but I think it'll be a good kind of start to 
um, to all the companies working together and see what that means. And hopefully we'll just be more global exposure for Drupal. Awesome. Um, Nikhil, you're obviously an end user of Drupal uh, as a state of Georgia. With, I don't even know how many websites now, but more than 100, right? Um, maybe in your mind, what, what, what should people like you, end users, know about Drupal? What would convince you to adopt Drupal? Just to give the audience a, a little flavor of what that might look like. So um, as an end user, uh, the state obviously um, hosts large websites like the Department of Revenue, Labor, driver services where we have daily interactions like in, in you know the millions right but also we host smaller websites for like a little lake or a little you know commission with like five people on it and and i think it's very important for us to convey that message to larger organizations that you know we need to if not build further that trust that you know even if someone can afford one of those larger options that that is very expensive. It is, it is two things that really kind of, you know, trust is built upon. One is the intention, and the other is the, you know, the overall competence of that product. Obviously, we have seen what an amazing product we are all behind, rallying behind, so the competency is, is obviously proven. But the other part, as far as the intention, which is the open web, I think it's very important for larger organizations who can afford to invest in this, and then not only just invest for their own betterment, but at that point, then just to turn around and contribute it and, and make the entire ecosystem better. So I feel like the education is still not there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have come a long way, at least in like the last 13 years that I have seen, we have come a very long way. But I still feel that there, there needs to be a lot of these conversations that need to be had for larger organizations to realize that, wait, open web is a good idea. And just because something is open, open source, it, it is not going to put me at risk. Because larger organizations tend to be a lot more risk averse than maybe smaller organizations. So it is OK, because we have such a great agency uh, community, um, partner community, that can support this product and that can help organizations you know, go through whatever the transition they're looking for. So really, the key message should be for those larger folks to be, you know, we'll build that, those bridges to move into the Drupal village. Yeah. Nice, very good. Um, as Lynn mentioned, we're currently working on a plan. Um, and by the end of the year, as Lynn mentioned, we're going to have a plan, and then we're going to have to switch from planning to, let's say, execution. Uh, and, and maybe for Suzanne, like, at that point, we're going to want to move beyond the marketing committee, so to speak, and get many more people involved. Any, any thoughts on how that might work? Yeah, so I think we can take a lot of inspiration from the code contribution that's happened in Drupal um, at such a scale. And I, I think one of the keys to success for that has really been the tooling and the processes that have been developed around contributing to Drupal. And so we need to do the same thing for marketing. And I know a lot of you um, are working at agencies and you have this expertise, you have this skill set, you're already using tools. And so we'd love to get you involved to help us scale up in that way. Um, and I think also from code contribution, we see a lot of passionate individuals. You saw them speaking up on the, the screen earlier. Um, and so we need those of you who are really passionate about Drupal and uh, have this background of marketing, content, design. You know, promote Drupal is the number one way for you to contribute really meaningfully to Drupal, I think, right now. So if you're looking for that opportunity, we also need those individuals to really step up and get involved. Excellent, thank you. Um, what's next for Drupal Marketing? Um, on the screen, you can see a timeline with some of the next kind of milestones. Um, you know, we're going to do more events. Um, we are going to finalize our marketing plan in December. And then you should start to see updates on the brand come to life um, next year, uh, Q1, Q2. And then uh, around May, we hope to have a preview of an updated website available. We'll see how that's tracking. But um, that's kind of where we are and what we hope to do next. So please, a big thank you for the marketing sorcerers. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Very good, thank you. Exciting. I'm excited about marketing. Um, you have to remember all of our competitors, 
some of the villages we visited. They have big marketing budgets. We've never had that in Drupal. And we're going to try and, and, and do some marketing ourselves. And I love what Suzanne uh, said as well, because if you think about what we've done on the code side of, of Drupal, we've, we've built one of the most amazing uh, engineering kind of organizations with tens of thousands of people contributing uh, to the technical side of Drupal. Imagine we can build something similar on the marketing side of Drupal. You know, we could truly do something very uh, spectacular and very unique um, that no other open source project has done. So I'm very excited about where this might lead, and uh, I'm grateful for the Drupal Association and the Marketing uh, Committee for kicking off uh, a lot of that work. So to wrap up this presentation, um, in this presentation, uh, Drupal has essentially made three impactful promises, right? An improved builder experience. Um, we are dedicated to improving our builder and editor experience. Uh, we pledged our support for the open web uh, to support a more accessible and inclusive digital future. And then we are committed to investing in marketing uh, to shine a bright light on your work, actually. Think about that also, like the goal is to highlight and spotlight the work that all of you are doing and to amplify our impact uh, in the world. Um, so <clears throat> with these three powerful promises in hand, Drupal's future appeared brighter and more promising than ever before. As the clouds were gradually pushed back, Drupal Village began to emerge as the most exciting place to be an ambitious villager. And Drupal's heart soared as the ambitious young builder returned to the Drupal village. And that's my story for today. And now we get to write the next chapter together. And maybe at a future DrupalCon, I'll read you chapter three and chapter four. Um, but those chapters, they start today here at DrupalCon with you. And we need your help. Um, and many of you, all of you, can help in one way or another. Uh, for site builders, um, there are many sessions that you can attend that cover the topics in this story. Uh, I'll show them to you in a second. Uh, you can participate in sprints. Um, if you have never contributed, we will teach you how. Uh, just come to the uh, mentoring days and the sprints. Uh, for marketers, there's also many great sessions to attend. Plus, you can help us by submitting case studies. Uh, you can contribute marketing materials. Many of you have marketing materials in your organization that you could uh, choose to open source and contribute. Uh, we can also help usability test the upcoming redesign of Drupal.org that I mentioned. Uh, there is a link here that you can follow to do that. It takes not that much time. Um, and here's actually an overview of some of the sessions. Uh, you can see sessions on the admin UI that Christina showed. Um, the Initiative Leads keynote is a great session to attend as well. There's going to be an update on the project browser. There's going to be an update and a session on automatic updates. Uh, as you can see, lots of great sessions and actually many more, um, all happening this week. So please do get involved. And uh, thank you for listening. Um, in the next week or so, I'll post my slides and video on my blog, as I always do. And yeah, with that, I want to say thank you. And please join us for the um, group photo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dries. Thank you again, everyone. With that, let's all gather ourselves up, gather our stuff together. Again, the group photo is happening on the main stairs right at registration where you came in. Um, please try and move together quickly, make some friends. Uh, we'll get the photo done, make it part of our proud history of DrupalCons, and then get on to the content. Thank you again. <laughs>